when I went to that audition for Workaholics for the very first time, I remember I went a day early. You did. I was a day early, and you were just walking around. I was getting a, a snack in, yeah. <laughs> in our snack room. In the, that's when our offices were in Burbank. Yeah, that weird, like you just took over like now casting or whatever yeah. it was. It was kind of awesome. We had a, at least had like a pretty dope parking spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before yeah. we were just in the blazing heat <laughs> that is Van Nuys. <laughs> but yeah, I remember running into you uh, in our little snack room. And I don't know, you were kind of like, oh man, I'm a day early or whatever. <laughs> yeah, because I, I was like, you were like, no, because you said to me, you were like, are you here for Montez? And I was like, yeah, yeah. You were like, that's tomorrow. Yes. And then I was so embarrassed. At the time, I was like, well, yeah, oh, you know, I was, in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm just here scouting, you know, before I. <laughs> do well, it. see, but me, I had that small interaction with you, and I ran back to the writer's room, mm -hmm. and I basically was like, guys, I just met our Montez. You heard it here first, people. <laughs> and, I, and they're like, who, who is this guy? I'm like, I don't know. It's like this uh, uh, bootleg Egyptian looking Sinbad. <laughs> Okay, let's tone it down now. We don't have to <laughs> but then I was like, who? They were like, who was? I, I was like, his name was Eric, Eric Griffin. And then Adam's like, no, no way. No way. We're not getting Eric. <laughs> oh, God. You, you know what's funny? I, Adam always hates when I, I've told this story so many times, but I saw him a week before and I didn't know that he had this show in the works. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, and I was giving him like that older guy sage advice, you know, just keep, keep working, buddy. You're going to make it one day type mm -hmm. of thing. Then I walk into this audition and I see him. And I thought, oh, well, he's interning or something like Whoa, that. Oh, like, really <laughs> that's why he didn't like me. You didn't treat him with the respect that was due to Mr. Divine. Yeah, whatever. You know, um, you wrote that first episode, right, that I was in. Uh, I'm credited. I mean, all the, the I've, yeah, you guys episodes were. we wrote together, and then they kind of, like, draw names out of hats to assign who gets what episode. And mine just so I technically own your character oh, because God. I wrote that episode. <laughs> <Own> so <me>. <laughs> any <laughs> break off, offshoot Montez show, I will be a producer on. People ask me about that all the time. It would be awesome. Yeah, this what it would what would it be now? Like it would be like ten years after. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you'd probably tell be, a closed you'd down. You'd be like probably working in your own, like you run a a section of Telemericorp now somewhere yeah. else, like in the Caribbean. It's or all sex toys or something yeah, like that. Yeah, oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Now, my question is when you when you made the character Montez, when you guys were talking about it, I know it was based off somebody that Anders knew, right? The name, the name I believe. Uh, I don't know so much that like you, the, you were the character. Yeah, but, I, but see, the thing is I remember coming into like the second audition where it was like these are the people that have a chance. Mm -hmm. And I looked around and I was like, oh, they don't know who this person is yet. Because it was like half the room was like black, black. Yeah. And then the other half was like Latino. Yeah. And then it was like me. And I was like, okay, I don't know who, what, I could tell you didn't even know what you wanted at first. Well, I think we, you know, we always wanted a diverse cast because, well, A, we're bringing three white dudes <laughs> to the table. So you got to. Are you, you coming with the foundation? <laughs> yeah, so you got to <laughs> switch it up a little bit. But I know, like, with the character of Montez, yeah, we kind of wanted someone who you know it was kind of just an odd person we wanted everybody in the office to be kind of real and when you are working those kind of places you meet the weirdest people yeah so we kind of just knew that we wanted him to be sort of a tech nerd yeah i felt like i was the leader of the nerds and that or the weird guys in that in that crew especially yeah. when i first met jet set and wayman yeah totally but then we thought it would be really funny if you were like hypersexual but completely 100 percent into your wife as well because we wanted to have that with those weird like sex stories, but it was always with your wife, so it's like you don't really want to hear this stuff. <laughs> Just kind of an oversharing. That guy. was our first scene together. Yeah, well, it that, was. Uh, well, not well, other than the bear coat thing. But I remember that was the audition. The audition was that five a.m. Yes, you know, and it was like so much longer. Laying the tarp. Yeah, down. laying the tarp down and all that, which yes. I still get people coming to me about baby oil and stuff. Yes. But I, yeah, I remember that. That was the audition. It was way longer in the script, the original script. Yeah. And then when it was time to shoot, you guys were like, "We're not going to have eight pages of Montez talking about fucking his wife." <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why we need the, the the show, the Montez show. All right. What I wanted. One of the things I wanted to ask you about about workaholics. Um, do you think that because it's such a dude show, you know, mm -hmm. it's such a like about drinking and all that kind of stuff, and you know, 
women and tits and all that. <laughs> uh-huh. Do you think that workaholics could have survived in the climate now? Um, I think that the people involved in that show, us, you know, mm-hmm. were smart enough to make it work. Yeah, I think yeah, we would have found a way to make it work for I sure. Agree. I, I mean, it was definitely a different climate back then, and when you go back and watch some of the things, you're like, geez, man, there's like no way you could even come close to making I know. this. And stuff. that was only like five, six years ago. It's I crazy, know. right? Like, the comedic landscape has just been a bizarre lately. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, we were just in there trying to make the funniest show possible, like just going for the jokes. We went for the jokes. <laughs> yes, we like, did. <laughs> I remember Sometimes I had too I remember, hard. Yeah, I remember I had to be naked. <laughs> yeah, lots of nudity. That's kind of our brand. <laughs> yeah, but I had to be naked. I remember even asking you. I was like, I said, this is, Montez is naked. I, I said, Are you sure? And you were like, Hey, man, that's been in the script for a long time. That's right. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, we didn't specifically write an episode <laughs> to see you naked. Trust me. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't come in. And you guys like, Oh, we oh, got to <laughs> we got to write some nude scenes for this guy. <laughs> no, that was not. On the agenda. Oh man, do you, what, what was your do you do you miss it? Like, do you miss doing workaholics? Um, I think what I didn't realize is how much workaholics was keeping me in touch with the dudes. Like, you know, like you kind of take it for granted when you see guys every single day for yeah. seven, eight years. And then when you don't have that job to go to, it's just, you know, it's, especially it's the nature of like this biz that people just kind of. Yeah, it's like summer camp when you do a job and you think like, we're going to be best friends forever. I mean, we're all still best friends. It's just, you know, people have families and work takes you to different cities and just getting together. That's what I know. I, I probably, I see Adam more than you see Adam now. Right. Or even like the, our writers that we work with oh, and I like know. all those people and everybody else in the cast. You just, you just. I don't know. I, I miss think, that. I am me too. You I miss the I, group of people. Yeah, that that was like some of the funnest times. Just like even in the early years in that like little shitty office with mm-hmm. these crazy little dressing rooms and yeah. you know, just dealing with like just how we shot it. it was, I felt like we were doing a student film at first. I mean, kind of well, when you think about it, we didn't have any sort of like vet on set. We <laughs> were all kind of just like this is our first swing at this <laughs> let's have fun this is a dream job we were all doing yeah. what we came here to do so there just wasn't any kind of egos or anything we just kind of just yeah i always I, I my favorite episode to this day is still office camp out mm-hmm. because to me it like epitomized what the show was about just yeah. you three just doing your thing and i i that's i always tell people watch workaholics in reverse it gets funnier <laughs> You know? True. I mean, a lot of those like early episodes, I feel like could be just movie premises. You know what I <laughs> well, mean? You, they, well, you well, it actually was a movie premise, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> you walking, being in that vent was the inspiration <laughs> for the yeah uh, uh, the the Netflix movie. Yeah, totally. Which, do you ever, do you ever find it weird that people still they they saw that movie and they still call it the workaholics movie? Yeah, I mean it's. But I don't blame them. I, I mean, it's pretty like on brand. Like we kind of just slightly pivoted. It's still like yeah, still Adam the, Blake and yeah, it's still yeah. that dude centric humor and cutting off dicks and all that stuff. <laughs> we didn't blown like, up dogs. Yeah, we didn't really uh, like push ourselves to some different characters or anything like that.